What's the proper balance between compassion and restraint? I think that's the main theme of what we're talking about today with Venezuela. So why are you looking at a joke meme about Cookie Monster and Hillary Clinton? Well, I think that it's kind of, you know, you could, you could disagree with me. It's kind of uh, empirical that everybody has a different standard of compassion that they adhere to and certain things that they care about more or less. You know, <coughs> some, some people care more about the environment. Some people care more about their uh, own children. Some, some of them care about other people's children. Some people care about animals more than they care about humans. And, uh, you know, in some cases, I would say that I agree because I think animals are a little less uh, liable to guilt than others. But why am I putting this here? I'll tell you why. I remember seeing this meme where Cookie Monster was shown as shot and people were like, well, what did he what did he know about Hillary Clinton? I remember seeing this and it, it was it was actually, uh, you know, it did evoke like a reaction. I was like, oh, crap, you know, because I love Cookie Monster. I'm like, yeah, th this this actually in some cases, it actually gave me more of a reaction than I would if somebody real had been shot. And that's what's so that's that's why I'm trying to say that you do need a balance between compassion and restraint when it comes to certain topics and to know when is the right time to do something and when's the right time to hold back. So we're going to talk about Venezuela today and I'm trying to put this here not to trivialize what's going on over there, but to tell you that a lot of people want us to intervene in Venezuela because of the just shocking humanitarian crisis there. But I, I personally don't think that we'll be able to solve it as, as the United States. It has to be something solved by Venezuela, and if not by Venezuela, then by the <coughs> local South American neighbors, Brazil, Colombia, and possibly an even broader coalition. So before I go any further, please like, share, and subscribe the video. There's also a poll up which I will be putting in the description. It's currently, we have 24 votes and it's for the next debate. And currently the option that's winning is, will, is the U.S. a society built on Judeo-Christian values? So you can go ahead and vote in the comments. I will put the link. First comment should have it. Now, I also have a new blog post concerning Bernie Sanders is the Kamala Harris for Jews. And here we go. So Venezuela has apparently been in a blackout over the past few days. And this is something that is going to be debated and yelled about back and forth uh, interminably because some people have this. There, there's two there's two schools of thought as far as Venezuela goes. In terms of the media that you uh, that you may absorb, if you're <coughs> if you're watching and listening to mainstream U.S. media and me and and to some extent conservative media, well, co conservative media would be probably even more adamant about this. The Venezuela crisis is being caused by socialism as a mindset and an economic system, which I'd have to say is uh, probably 90 to 95 percent true. If you listen to other media, far left wing media or, you know, so simply media from from countries that are a little hostile to the U.S., such as Russia or, or even the Chinese media, they they are saying that it's the sanctions and U.S. intervention that are causing this economic crisis in Venezuela. And <clears throat> the simple truth is that there are there have been countries in the past that were able to manage their economies under a socialist system for a long time without the type of dysfunction that happened in Venezuela, but other other issues took them down. Yugoslavia, for example, was not in a level of economic crisis that we see today in Venezuela. What brought Yugoslavia down was ethnic divisions. If you look at states like Hungary, they had a pretty stable economy for se several decades, but the, the reality was that most people didn't really have any confidence in the system because it was imposed by the Soviet Union. And as far as the Soviet Union itself, it's the same situation as with 
Yugoslavia. It was simply a patchwork of different ethnic groups, and they essentially had, um, you, you know, subsumed all of those na national nationalities under the mantle of Soviet communism. But in 1991, people started to realize that that it really wasn't a system that was built to last. And 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 in reality, the people at the top had, had ceased to really care about the actual belief systems of communism and Marxism. They, they, they pretty much softened under Gorbachev. So that was the demise of the Soviet Union. And if you look at some of these other countries that have gone through phases of socialism, you know, some of the softer versions, such as the Nordic countries and, um, you know, Africa, you know, Tanzania. Well, cert at certain points, people who are leading officials start to realize, well, we could be doing a lot better a different way. If you look at what happened in Vietnam, <coughs> the Vietnamese defeated us, defeated the United States, if you want to think of it that way. And it's probably as close to accuracy as you, as you can, even though we withdrew in 1973. The Vietnamese defeated us in a war. And, and, and the communists won. And within about 15, 20 years, communism as, as a system ceased to be really the governing doctrine of Vietnam. The, you know, in the late 80s and early 90s, they started to move towards kind of a mixed economy and, and, and permit pri private enterprise. Doctrinal communism seems to be abandoned in countries where leaders seem to, to f figure out, well, we could just do things better a different way. And, and in fact, I have yet to see a country where long-term communism has been implemented to the letter and benefited the citizens. Okay, so you have North Korea, you have places like Albania during the Cold War, which was one of the strictest communist countries in the world. And those countries were absolutely, and, and in Korea's case still is, they're they're absolutely devoid of any of any freedom, of any personal choice, of any civil liberties. And those who will say, well, <coughs> what's important is that they remain independent from this uh, <coughs> global financial system. All right, so so if you want to do that trade off, why don't you move there? Okay, you should you should see what happened in in Albania, which is now free of communism, and why. The people basically abandoned it. <laughs> so it says here that furious Venezuelans lined up to buy fuel, water and fuel on Sunday as the country endured a fourth day of a nationwide blackout that has left already scarce food rotting in shops, homes suffering for lack of water and cell phones without reception. <coughs> Authorities have managed to provide only patchy access to power since the outage began on Thursday and what President Nicolás Maduro called an act of U.S.-backed sabotage, but critics insist is the result of incompetence and corruption. The government on Sunday suspended school and business activities for the following day without providing any information on the likely time frame for resolving the situation, leaving many fretting what, that it could extend indefinitely. The country's worst ever power outage comes as Maduro faces a hyperinflationary economic collapse and an unprecedented political crisis. Opposition leader Juan Guaido in, in January invoked the Constitution to assume the presidency after declaring Maduro's 2018 re-election a fraud. Angry residents <coughs> of the Caracas neighborhood of Chacao on Sunday set up bar barricades along a main avenue and on side streets to protest the continued blackout. The food we had in our refrigerators has spoiled. Businesses are closed and there's no communication, not even by cell phone. Ana Serato, 49, a merchant standing in front of a pile of razors, razor wire and debris. We need help. We are in a humanitarian crisis. Lines at fuel stations extend for blocks as drivers queued for gasoline and buses waiting, waited to fill up with diesel. Families stood under the sun to buy potable water, which is unavailable for most residents whose homes do not have power. State oil company Pedavesa on Sundays said on Sunday that the fuel supplies were guaranteed, but only around 100 of the country's 1,800 service stations were operating due to the blackout, according to gas station industry sources. 
Merchants unable to f keep refrigerators working began giving away cheese, vegetables, and meat to clients. Wow. So they, 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 they are giving away food now. Uh, other shops had supplies stolen. One supermarket in southeastern Caracas was looted on Sunday evening, triggering a shootout with police and National Guard troops, according to Reuters witnesses and an employee who was present. The looters took food, including pasta, rice, and tomato sauce. A neighboring shop selling home goods, such as plastic chairs, was also looted. The National Guard rounded up more than 40 people at the scene, tied their hands behind their backs, and ordered them to lie face down in a road that authorities had blocked during the confrontation, a Reuters witness said. <coughs> On Saturday night, a small supermarket in a working-class area of western Caracas was looted after protesters barricaded an avenue and clashed with police, according to neighbors and the shop's owner, Manuel Caldera. They took food, they broke the display windows, they stole scales and point-of-sale terminals, said Caldera, 58, standing on the shop floor littered with glass. We weren't here when it happened. We got here and found all this destroyed. So what will, what will become the, the response of the government and many people is that, well, we can't have a, a functioning economy if everybody, if everybody is looting. They, they don't understand. If, if, if they had a functioning economy, nobody would be looting. Okay, people would be able to just use the services without having to resort. Uh, nobody. Let me put it this way. If you could live your life without having to go to the store, break a window, climb through the window, and get you know a loaf of bread or or, or maybe a, a gallon of milk out of there, or in their case, a quart, you think you would you would do the the easy way. Most people don't resort to most people don't resort to a life of crime in order to seek thrills and in order to, to steal food. Okay, that's that's not even it's not even ide an ideological thing. I don't think that whether you're a right wing or a left wing person, you would agree that people resort to looting shops in order to just screw with people. Okay, and th these are crowds of people. Forty people looting a, a store is not a criminal. It's it's not an act of of, of typical criminality in in our country in the U.S. Okay, it might be in other countries, but over here it's not. And I, I found it like bizarre a couple of weeks ago when I saw some people replying to, you know, the, the whole Jorge Ramos thing by saying, well, I live in L.A. I see people eating out of the garbage all the time. Well, <laughs> the fact of the matter is that you don't see that. First of all, the, the system that Chavez was supposed to set up in order to save Venezuela was supposed to eliminate that. And it didn't. OK, so that's already a sign of failure because you're you're agreeing that it's at least as bad as you have it in L.A. And second of all, the homeless crisis in L.A. is partly as a result of the rest of the country's homeless migrating over there and also because of the opioids and also because of the declining job market over in California. So Guaido slammed Maduro's government for failing to explain what was going on. The regime at this hour days after a blackout without precedent has no diagnosis he said at a news conference by the way i think uh <coughs> i don't think they bring it up here but marco rubio actually made this this uh blunder this tweet where he said that the herman dam has burst but it turned out that the the explosion that he was referring to was not related to herman dam because that was the guy's name the, the reporter's name was Herman Dam, Her, like Herman, but with a G, because in, in Spanish the the letter G is the, is an H sound. So <laughs> he's he's going to get some shit for that, and justifiably because he, Marco Rubio is kind of an idiot. Information Minister Jorge Rodriguez said on state television that the government was taking care of the situation without offering technical details on what was causing the continued outage. While the promoters of hate, death, and violence delight in their destabilization plans, President Nicolás Maduro has ordered a deployment of ministers to ensure the Venezuelan people are intend attended to. I don't know what a deployment of ministers would do unless they're also licensed electricians and power, uh, you know, power professionals, you know. Guaido invoked the Constitution to assume an interim pre presidency in January, arguing that Maduro's 2018 re-election was fraudulent. He has been recognized as Venezuela's legitimate leader by the United States and most Western countries. I know Italy, for example, is not recognizing him. 
But Maduro retains control of the armed forces and state functions. The so-called Lima Group of Nations, which includes Latin American countries that have vocally opposed Maduro, said in a statement that the blackout was confirmation of the humanitarian crisis that Maduro's regime refuses to recognize. Elliot Abrams, <coughs> the Trump administration's envoy for Venezuela, said Maduro is not open to negotiations and seems intent on staying put. Speaking on ABC's This Week program, U.S. Nation, National Security Advisor John Bolton said Venezuelan military officers were having conversations with opposition legislators about what might come, how they might move to support the opposition. So I, I don't know how I think this is the, this is the problem. OK, I hate Nicolas Maduro. I hate the left and I hate socialism. And then on the other hand, John Bolton is full of crap and he's been a liar his entire career. And so has Elliot Abrams. And I'm not going I'm not just because I oppose something doesn't mean I'm going to support idiots in order to fight it. OK, it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm going to. It's the same thing. Uh, just because I oppose Elliot Abrams doesn't mean I'm going to support Ilhan Omar, who criticized him. I, I can I can be on my own side without having to support people that I find despicable. Okay. Power returned briefly to parts of Caracas and other cities on Friday, but went out again midday, midday on Saturday. One can infer from the delays and the results of the failure that it was a problem in the lines that leave Uri rather, rather than in the plant itself, said Miguel Lara, a former president of the state-run entity responsible for the electricity system, referring to the Uri hydroelectric electric power plant which supplies most of Venezuela's electricity. The extent of the blackout's impact on the country's crude oil production, the source of nearly all the government's export earnings, remains unclear. Most of the key, of the joint, key joint ventures between PDVSA and foreign partners in the Orinoco Belt, the country's main crude region, run on their own generators, but many fields in western Sulia, this state, state depend on the grid. One source at a foreign company uh, partnered with PDVSA in a joint venture said output was stable. PDVSA did not respond to multiple requests for comment. So I, I want this to be clear. The reason they keep asking about PDVSA and, you know, there's there's other channels out there who are, you know, they do good work and I, I, they have other perspectives on this. For example, you know, Mike at Rethinking the Dollar, who I, I very much respect because he's a currency wizard he knows everything about currency they're they're saying that this nothing good can come from getting involved in venezuela and they they're skeptical of literally everything the opposition is doing and you know what i tend to be a little closer to the side of somebody like like mike from rethinking the dollar than the people who are speaking on behalf of of washington and john bolton and the trump administration and and you know it's not like i'm a, I'm a huge never trumper or something i'm just saying I'm skeptical of what they're saying on this because every all the time the focus is on Vene, on PDVSA because ultimately whoever rules Venezuela will not will after that have power over the greatest oil reserves in the world. Okay, that's that's unfortunately the truth. You, I mean, I have sympathy for all the people down there. I have sympathy for the people, you know, the people who, who are refugees over in Brazil and in Colombia and Peru and in Ecuador. But, you know, I, I don't think that we should invade countries based on this. Um, and, 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 you know, people will say, well, it's because of humanitarian reasons. Bullshit. If it's for humanitarian reasons, it wouldn't even mention PDVSA. So then um, there, there's other interesting trends going on and we'll try to analyze them at the moment. They're a little confusing, but Nicaragua, which is an ally of PDVSA, seems to have done something strange, and it says that they've approved <laughs> the purchase of a bank tied to Venezuela's PDVSA. Nicaraguan lawmakers voted on Thursday to authorize a $23 million government purchase of Boncorp, a financial institution that has been sanctioned by the United States for its links to, Pe to Venezuelan state-owned oil company PDVSA. The acquisition is seen as a way to protect the bank from the tough U.S. sanctions that were enacted in late January and aimed at depriving embattled Venezuelan president Nicolas Maduro from obtaining proceeds from PDVSA, especially its Houston-based subsidiary, 
Sitgo Petroleum. The government of President Daniel Ortega, one of Maduro's few remaining allies in Latin America, formally asked lawmakers to make the purchase, filing an urgent request to do so on Wednesday. Lawmakers from Ortega's ruling Sandinista National Liberation Front, who hold a majority in Congress, voted for the measure. Banca, Bancorp was created in 2015 as a su subsidiary of Alba de Nicaragua, also known, known locally as Albanisa, a joint venture between Pe Venezuela's Pedavesa and Petroleos de Nicaragua, the country's state-owned oil firm, according to, the st to statements from government officials at the time of its creation. Bancorp officials, however, deny that Albanisa or Petroleos de Venezuela, as Pedavesa is formerly known, have stakes in the bank or influence in its or influence its operations. Last month, the U.S. Secretary of State for Western Hemisphere Affairs, Assistant Secretary of State for Western Hemisphere Affairs, Kimberly Breyer, singled out both Albanisa and Boncorp as falling under the new sanctions. Sanctions on PDVSA also target Albanisa, Boncorp, and all majority-owned subsidiaries. We will continue to hold the Ortega regime accountable, Breyer wrote in a post on Twitter. Ortega's domestic opposition in the Congress sharply criticized the purchase. Buying a bank that's contaminated by PDVSA money is a wrong-headed, infuriating decision that exposes the state to U.S. sanctions, says, said Asukena Castillo, a congresswoman with the opposition Liberal Constitutionalist Party during the heated legislative debate on Thursday. Lawmakers voted to finance the bank corp purchase with a six-year bond issuance. So wh that, what does that mean? <laughs> That means that Nicaragua it has voted to buy out a, a, a bank that is going to be used to, to launder money for Venezuela. Okay, they're bailing out a Venezuelan bank. Okay, despite what everybody's saying, it's it's probably it's it's likely used in order to if it's such an emergency, then why then why hide the fact that it's tied to PDVSA? Because it's it is tied to Albanisa, which is a joint venture between. PDVSA and, and its uh, Nicaraguan ca counterpart. So Nicaragua itself is broke. They're going to have to issue a six-year bond and get even further in debt in order to prop up this bank. And <laughs> it'll, likely, it'll likely be used <coughs> in order to facilitate payments to Maduro and PDVSA. So that's, that's, a, real, that's a real problem for... Ortega, and it will probably come back to bite him in the ass because, and, and I don't care if you're on the left or the right, it will, because they know that the game is all about credit, the game is all about uh, debt and whatever, and this isn't helping Nicaragua get out of debt, it's actually helping it get further into debt, and they'll probably portray this as some sort of compassionate, uh, you know, like, again, a compassionate intervention to, to save their brother or sister in solidarity, Venezuela, and it's it's not going to help because the people of, of Nicaragua will probably figure, well, well, we're a pretty poor country, and it used to be that Venezuela was much richer than us, and now that they're basically falling apart, we're supposed to bail them out. That's probably the mood of the average Nicaraguan. Okay, now we'll see what happens going on. I can't guarantee it's going to happen the way that I'm saying it, but I, I think it will. Okay. So on a final note, you know, I'm reading this book called Banana Wars, and I can highly recommend it because those of you that are on the political right or those of you that are, are opponents of socialism in any way, I, I feel what you're talking about. And in some cases you want intervention, but don't fall for it. We do not want our troops to be going down there to, to subject us, you know, exposure to the elements down there, the tropics and whatever, <coughs> possibly creating ecological disasters in the process. Remember what happened in, in Iraq with Saddam and uh, burning, <coughs> burning the oil fields and all that. That's we, we can't let our urge to help the world end up killing it. OK, we, we have to look at this situation as far as what's the best decision for the people of Venezuela, the land of Venezuela, and the future of Venezuela, and not look at it in terms of, well, we should intervene there because we have to screw, we have to destroy socialism. No. Socialism has already destroyed itself there. 
The only question is how many people's lives can we save in the process of unraveling it? Okay, that's about it. I think that I made myself clear. We have to do the right decision instead of the convenient decision and instead of the decision that feels good in the gut. So that's about it. Once again, please vote in the poll. Okay, you can, here I'll show you. You can pick any of the five options. You know, you can pick one or more, which however many you want. And also please check out my latest blog post on, on the Sanders uh, connection to Judaism. Bernie Sanders is Kamal Harris for Jews. And I'm not going to uh, back down from that. And that's about it. Please like, share, subscribe. Subscribe to me. Also, I have a channel called uh, Razor Ray Special Cuts, as well as my channel on BitChute. And I also have Gab, Minds, and, you know, Twitter, whatever. That's all, That should also be in the comment section. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a great Monday.